Finally, an answer to the question. Is Orochimaru Mizuki's father or his mother? Well, both? Neither? I don't know, this shit's weird. Like everything involving Orochimaru, nothing is ever simple. And this final one-shot, written and drawn by Masashi Kishimoto, is no exception. It is uh, 40 some odd pages long and details the backstory of Mizuki and his relationship to Orochimaru. The chapter starts off and Mizuki has no idea who he is or anyone around him. No memories at all. Orochimaru and Suigetsu are tending to him. Orochimaru goes to his office and tells Suigetsu to bring Mizuki to him once he's kind of been taken care of. Give him medicine, give him whatever he needs, fill him in on everything he's missed so far, and bring him to the office. However, in the interim, we see Orochimaru in his office with a cloaked figure. It's very suspicious how they're talking. They say, oh, this is the sixth attempt. Let's see if this time, you know, everything works out in our favor. We can't keep doing this. Already you know something's up because it's Orochimaru and of course it's suspicious and weird. So he gets to tells Mizuki that in the last mission, Orochimaru and him were a two-man cell and they were attacked by a man that stole all of his memories and now they're trying to get them back. So the best way to do this and to gain this kid's trust is to attack him with a kunai. Mizuki is more than capable of defending himself. He pulls a Luffy, stretches his arms, entangles Suigetsu so he can't move. But Mizuki realizes it was just to test his abilities and there's really no threat. They meet up in Orochimaru's office and god damn it, why does Orochimaru look so pretty? I'm guessing he's in a female body, but that is no excuse. He's been in female bodies before. The first time we ever meet him, he's in a female body and he still looked creepy as shit. Here, he looks be shonen, he looks sexy, he looks like a girl. In fact, he's prettier than Sakura. In fact, for the entire chapter he is. And the first time we see him he has his hair long and in a in a um a ponytail. Looks really cute and then and later we see his hair in a bun with chopsticks through it. Could you be any more effeminate? Keep in mind, this attractive looking male is in his 70s at this point. What the fuck? Anyway, Orochimaru gives him the rundown. There's this guy, he stole your memories, we're gonna get him back. Come with me, I'm gonna help you. Because you're my kid. I'm your parent, and I care about you, and... Suffice it to say, Mizuki's not buying it. His first question is, okay, if, I'm, if I was with you and you say you're my parent, then which one are you? My mother or father? And I love how smoothly Orochimaru dodges this question. Oh, that doesn't matter. That's inconsequential. What matters is you're my kid and I love you and I'm going to protect my precious, adorable child. Can anyone buy that? Does anyone think Orochimaru has a selfless bone in his body? And if there was any doubt that Orochimaru was clearly being insincere, the next panel is a flash of his eyes, bloodshot and veiny, saying, you are but a child, you will obey your parent. Yeah, that's not suspicious at all. And they go to this cave where this masked man is waiting for them, and there's this barrier. And this is what I said about Orochimaru looking really effeminate. Here, his hair, he has the, the bang, he has the side bangs framing his face, he's got the, the crescent-shaped earrings that he usually has, and they're showing a lot more because his hair isn't down, it's up in a really nice bun with the chopsticks, and I'm like, why, Kishimoto, why are you confusing us sexually? Anyway, we get to see that Mizuki's abilities are really pretty cool, even if he has no idea what he's doing or how to use his abilities because his memory has been wiped. He can put his hand on a barrier and dispel it. He can dispel a, a barrier just by touching it. How, I don't know. It's not explained, it's just a latent ability that he has. After a quick exchange, the masked man and Orochimaru fight. 
The mass man attempts to paralysis Jutsu, doesn't work. Orochimaru uses a snake to bite him. The armor that the guy's wearing can't be penetrated by the snake's fangs. So the masked man uses some kind of black goo to trap Orochimaru and encase him. And as Orochimaru is being encased in this black tar, he tells Mitsuki, the rest is up to you. You have sage power. Help. Yeah, no pressure or anything. Uh, you with no memory, a child, and no idea what your abilities are or who this opponent is, uh, I just watched one of the three legendary Sanin be bested in combat, and then he just tells you, okay, you gotta help me out. Uh, I can't do anything anymore. Why would you think the kid wouldn't just have a panic attack and drop to the ground, paralyzed with fear? Just as the masked man is about to cut Mitsuki down, he's paralyzed. He can't move. Why? Orochimaru had distracted him with the big snake that tried to bite him, but a little tiny itty bitty snake managed to get under his armor and bite him, paralyzing him. Orochimaru easily breaks out of this black tar cocoon and tells Mitsuki, okay, everything's fine, don't worry, he can't move, he can barely speak. I'm gonna go into the cave and get the thing we were looking for and find a way to get your memories back. You just sit tight. So the masked man now gets the obligatory scene where he and the main protagonist of this particular one-shot have a heart-to-heart, one-on-one conversation where truths will be revealed. Tells him, take off my mask, I can't do anything to you, I can barely speak. You take off the mask, everything will fall into place, you'll figure out why Orochimaru is not to be trusted. Says, the one deceiving you is Orochimaru and I can prove it. When Mitsuki takes off the mask, it's an older version of Mitsuki with a scar across his face, but they look the same. Tells him, we are both synthetically created humans by Orochimaru. I was the one made before you. We were created to be vessels for his experiments to be used at his whim. Which, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds like the Orochimaru I know because I can guarantee you Orochimaru has only ever slept with males. Child males. Sasuke. Snake up the butt. The thing they came into the cave to find is actually uh, a seal containing uh, the embryos that they were originally harvested and created from. So he's just trying to get the resource to make more of Mitsuki. The older Mitsuki has some kind of self-loathing thing going on where he says that organisms created artificially are not human. That embryo is an accursed, selfish creation. It was made with a human ego and therefore should be destroyed. Rochimaru comes back, he's heard all of this and says, well, it really doesn't matter if you were born artificially or through natural sexual intercourse. You're still my child, I care about you just the same. You are my completely and utterly flawless children whom I love dearly. And Orochimaru says the biggest bullshit I've ever heard him say. Says, Is it truly wrong for a ninja like me to wish to have a child of his own? If there is one single thing which all humans should be forgiven for regardless of circumstances, is it not acting out of love? Acting out of what exactly? What? Orochimaru and love. Love for a child which he created in a laboratory for his own purposes. I can get it if he's saying like narcissistic love, love of the self, but he's talking about a kid. He, he cares about him as a, ch as a son. I call such bullshit. Such unmitigated bullshit. So grown-up Mitsuki and Orochimaru argue back and forth about the moral implications of, uh, of playing God and, and, and messing around with lives and creating artificial humans and whether or not they're real people and uh, how it, it, it's robbing them of their free will and individuality and they just go back and forth and are kind of pressing Kid Mitsuki to make a decision who they should side with. Orochimaru or grown-up Mitsuki. Grown-up Mitsuki would be like an older brother, but Orochimaru would be like the parent, and it's, it's, it puts him in such an awkward position 
both of them trying to tell him what is best for him. And of course, as any child would, he snaps, smashes the, the mask in his hand, and we get to see him in the most badass looking Sage Mode transformation I have ever seen. Naruto, step aside. Jiraiya, you have no stake in this game. And Kabuto, fuck off. This. This Sage Mode transformation looks sick. He has the Shukaku black rimmed eyes with the veins coming down. He has this one large protruding horn from his forehead. His hair's on fire like Hades. And he's got ephemeral snakes wrapping around him. His speed is so great he can snatch things away from Orochimaru before he even has time to register that it's happened. And he says, I don't care what either of you say. I will decide my own fate. You adults cannot tell me what to do. This is my life. I will decide how to live. And Mitsuki disappears. And then we get to see the Shyamalan awesomeness of this ending. What a twist! The guy in the mask, the, the adult version of Mitsuki, and Orochimaru were working together for the sixth time to push Mitsuki, the child, to this point. The entire thing was a setup to get him to awaken the sage mode and go down this path. And what was actually in the scroll wasn't the embryos or anything like that. This whole elaborate thing was to set him on a path to where he would befriend Boruto because he wants to see what happens when you put someone who is the darkness, the, the moon, uh, because his name is a reference to the moon, next to the sun, Boruto, light, shining, brightness, warmth. Orochimaru's goal, if he can get the two together, then Mitsuki will become like a moon, brightly shining and illuminating the night. Kind of poetic, I don't really get what Orochimaru is going to get out of this, other than maybe getting to see underage gay sex, because that's his thing. Maybe that's what he wants, to set them up as a couple? But it, it seems... I, I honestly have no idea what Orochimaru gains from this, other than just messing around with people, trying to figure out how people work. And to some degree, I think that's all Orochimaru ever really wants. He just wants to mess around and see how far he can push people and, and how different scenarios affect the development of people. So in that scroll was actually a bunch of information, photos and documents and the history of Naruto and Boruto and the location where to find him. So final goal. Boru uh, Mitsuki goes to the Konoha to meet Boruto and befriend him. Cool! That concludes this one shot, and not next week, but the week after, starts the serialization of the Boruto manga. And we've already seen what the art style is going to look like. It's going to take some time to get used to, but the beginning of the Naruto manga didn't look that great either. It will get better, I promise. That's just what happens when uh, a manga artist starts a manga for the first time. They gotta get used to drawing the characters, they have to find their own style and pace and rhythm. So, once this guy who's gonna be drawing the new Naruto series gets the hang of it, it'll flow much more naturally. All in all, I thought it was a great one-shot. It did a good job of telling the story. Um, it was a little confusing as to what was going on, like you knew Orochimaru was manipulating things, you knew it was insincere, but to a certain degree I don't think it was malevolent. I don't think Orochimaru was trying to hurt Mitsuki, I don't think he was even trying to hurt older Mitsuki, I don't think he was doing anything nefarious, he's just trying to set Mitsuki up with Boruto and see if their friendship creates a, a new kind of team dynamic kind of thing, I'm guessing. We'll just have to see where it goes. We're just going to have to start picking up the Boruto manga when it comes out two weeks from now. I'm excited. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I will see you guys... Well, actually, I'm going to see you guys uh, in a little bit because I'm going to talk about the new Bleach chapter. And I'm going to talk about the uh, Dragon Ball Super episodes, which I've finally been catching up on and been writing little notes about 
what I liked, didn't like, and why I think this show is being such a pain. See you guys in a little bit. Bye.